<clears throat> Hello, my lovelies. Tuesday evening. It is over here anyway. It is 6 p.m. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Manhase. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Nina. Thank you for joining me, guys. Welcome, welcome to the Chalk Paint uh, 101 page and to my page, Elfen und Helden. My name is Angela and I'm the creative energy behind Elfen und Helden. And um, I'm happy to be here. Hello, Anna Maria. How are you? Guys, I hope you're all well. When you join me, just say hi to me. Let me know where you're watching from. As I said, it's already 6 p.m. over here. Um, the sun just came out, but it's still pretty cold. So um, we are going to start. This is like a little um, bathroom cabinet for medicine. It's uh, It's got, got engraved in here the German word um, Apotheke. And this is, uh, we're going to co uh, cover that up. The, the plan for that thing is it's going to be painted with the silk all-in-one mineral paint in deep sea, which is like a, a dark navy blue. Hi, Christine. From, from Washington, 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 or <laughs> I guess it's Washington. Thanks for joining me, guys. So this is going to be the main color for the for that project. And we're going to do some decoupage, probably not to today because we're going to do a little bit of prep work before we start. Um, this is the uh, sketch blue, blue flowers from Dixie or from Bells and Whistles, basically. They are going to go on there. I'm probably going to use a woody band, which is the uh, 1374, which you can get from Dixieville and the Dixieville retailers also. Um, I brought with me um, the All Natural from the Voodoo Gel Stains, which uh, we're going to use on the inside. I'm going to show you in a minute what it looks like on the inside. And I have my clear coat and satin for the decoupage and for sealing eventually. I have my boss. I'm going to talk about that in a minute also. And I have my Dixie mat because I want to cover up this uh, engraving. So, but just let's get started. So this is what this piece looks like. It's in very good shape. That's from the inside. I've already taken the, the shelves um, out and I've taped it on the inside because I'm gonna keep the, the wood on the inside. It's in very good shape. I'm just gonna use the Voodoo Gel Stain in All Natural inside. And I have a box. This is what I'm going to need. And I'm first going to take this is one of those pieces where you can just take the, the door off, which is pretty, pretty handy, so to say. I'm going to show you, there you can see the engraving. And this is what I want to cover up. This is what I want to cover up. And I'm first going to take off all, you know, I usually paint over my handles and stuff like that, but this one um, is pretty easy to take off. I guess it's pretty easy to take off. Hi, Jill. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Um, <laughs> let's see if this is really going to work that easy as I thought. So what I do, uh, I keep like, uh, this is, um, there was some cream cheese in there and obviously it's cleaned out and I have, um, I keep that, I uh, use that for storing my um, bits and pieces from the handles and stuff like that in there. So first the key I'm going to drop in there. This is just nailed on, on the front. I'm going to take that off also. I have a little screwdriver. Let's see if this is fighting me or if this is working. Master of disaster at its best. Just trying to get slowly under there and just like, it's nailed, it's not screwed, it is nailed. There you go. That was pretty easy. So that's very pretty. 
I like the color also. Place that in there. And also those handles on the, or those hooks where it's hanged up, it is screwed in. You can basically just take it out like this. As I said, I usually leave it in or on there. It's most of the pieces, it's not that easy to take off most of the time. The doors don't fit anymore um, after you've <laughs> Put them back on. So who is painting along with me? What are you working on, guys? What are you working on? You see, you can just like screw, screw those off. What I've done before, uh, I started a live. I've took some pictures, you know, how far those things were screwed in, stuff like that, so that I have like a rough idea when I put them back in that they um, that they fit. So well, that makes your life easier when you can take the things off you so you don't you can easily so you don't need to worry about cleaning it afterwards or whatever put that all in the thing what i've done before um also this was cleaned with white lightning so i guess in the last weeks as this is the months of preparation you've seen a lot of information about white lightning um so i'm not gonna do that on here but it was cleaned with white lightning i always clean my projects with it another reason i didn't want to do that on the live here because um this is raw wood basically and um, if i use water on there and things um, it'll need some time to dry and I don't want to keep keep you waiting so just clean your fingers if you have any questions guys leave them in the comments um I will see that I answer those straight away otherwise I'll come back later for them if you haven't done that yet close it up put a lid on there so I'm not losing it Keep that safe, <clears throat> put it to the side. And I'm first gonna cover up with you the, those are the shelves from the inside you don't need. On the floor, it's ever so pretty. It's a nice piece because you don't need to do that much preparation on it. So first we're going to cover up those um, engraving. And as I said, I've brought my Dixie mud. I'm just gonna bring you closer and put you a little down so you can see what I do. Don't need to see my old face. So um, Dixie mud is, well, it is mud basically. And uh, this was already opened. I store that in the fridge. That's what you should do. It's <clears throat> all natural. And um, when you have it open, um, as I said, store it in the fridge because eventually um, you can get like mildew on there if you don't. It is great for small repairs and covering up um, a ray stenciling. You can do that great with that also. Just got like a, a little spatula. And I'm just going to get that on here. Pretty generous. It is ever so easy to sand down. You can do, as I said, also ray stenciling with it. It comes in three colors, in white, in brown, and in black. I'm just using white for now. That's what I had on hand but it comes in three colors. I put it on here generous. As I said, I can sand it down. When it dries, it'll shrink a little bit. I might be then okay with just one coat. And let me see. Place this in here. Little edge I've missed. So. First thing done, let that dry and then we can carry on with the other bits. So don't, um, 
it's not recommended to um, wash it down your sink because when it dries, it gets pretty hot and you may end up with clogging up your, your pipes. So that's what it looks like now. Let it dry, put that to the side. And let's get started with our, yeah, with our deep sea. Put it back up now again. Sorry if I make you dizzy, guys. If I make you dizzy. If I make you dizzy. So silk all-in-one mineral paint. Um, as this is a bathroom cabinet, I've chosen this um color or this paint line basically they for those who don't know the silk all in one mineral paints it is a mineral paint it is you know all in one basically hi Kristen hi sweetie um it is water based so also you know when you use it mix it up nicely I'm just stirring it up nicely because this water based products they may separate when they stand and you don't want, um, you want to have all the goodies mixed up. All in one means it has a built in base coat. The base coat in here is basically um, a stain blocker. Not, uh, not, um, not, um, let me think. I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> I mean, I'm German after all, guys. I'm lost for words at the moment. So the, the base coat in here is a stain blocker. So as this is like raw pine wood and it'll, you know, will bleed. That's the color of my choice. And also because it's going to go in the bathroom. Benefits of those paints is also that they are mildew resistant. They are um, grease resistant. They are great paints for outside because they also are uv um, resistant so and they have a built-in top coat also why i always um, still seal my paints because you know i sell my products and um, i want to avoid accidentally you know cutting into it or something like that when you have <clears throat> a painted piece or something like that um make a scuff sand make a scuff sand um so that the paint adheres nicely as this is raw wood i don't need to sand at all that's that's fine like that so now i've got it it's it, it hasn't got a bonding primer it's a, a stain blocker in there but not a bonding primer so if you want to paint with uh, silk paints on glass or metal or plastic or those laminated pieces use a bonding primer the slick stick for example from dixieville and you're good to go so they are water-based as i said before um but you um shouldn't use your spray bottle you can if you wish but you should be clear that uh, you may compromise the the benefits of those paints so i'm not using any water the only thing I like to do, I like to have my brushes slightly damp. So I prefer that for, oh, thank you, Kristen. That's so sweet. <laughs> um, I like to have like a slight damp brush. I'm not soaking it. I'm just going to get it like a little mo moisture so it is not as dry as it was before. So, but you know, you shouldn't use any, any water to spray on there. So then it's going to be one color on the outside. Your grip, your paint. Look at this gorgeous color. Ever so pretty. And then you just paint along. You just paint along. That color goes beautifully with the... It goes beautifully with that um, decoupage paper I have in mind. The brush I'm using is the mini brush for those who follow me. By the way, if you don't do that yet, please do so. They have like a, those paints have like a slight um, satiny finish. The chalk metal paints, they have like a flat finish and they dry slight 
satiny. <clears throat> also, the chalk mineral paints, they basically dry the same color they appear when they are wet. The um, silk all in one mineral paints, they get slightly um, darker when they dry. And for those who know the terra clay paints, they um, they turn out slightly lighter when they dry. So just keep that in mind. They do have color cards if you um, want to make sure you get like the exact the exact um, color for your project. You can see the great coverage. So basically one coat is almost fine. Still, I'm going to do two coats. For the um, integrated blocking primer, you should um, keep in mind that one coat of the silk is about approximately one coat of the, the boss. So boss is the blocking primer from um, Dixie Bell. I think I should use my glasses. I can't really see. So, let's see. turn it a little up to the front. Ever so easy to use those paints also. So, and as you can see, I love my mini brush. I basically do almost everything with it, you know, for the um, bigger surfaces, I use the wide side. If I do the smaller surfaces, I use the, the small side. No, Marsha. Um, this obviously depends on the project itself. If I have, if I have um, wood, which is a bleeder, like pine or something like that, and I work with light colors, I use a primer because I don't want to have any bleed through, which can change your color and end up with some stains. So um, that's when I use um, a primer, a blocking primer. And when I paint on slick surfaces like glass or metal or plastic or those laminated pieces, or if you have, I had, this is gonna be posted in a, in a, in a mow. I've done a very, very old kitchen buffet, which was painted, you know, <laughs> this, this paint, you just couldn't get off. It's from the, I reckon from about the forties, fifties. And the paint they used on there, um, I think that was used, you know, for the NASA or something like that. You just couldn't get it off. It was so strong. So that's basically, uh, and it was like a slick, um, um, a shiny, a shiny finish also. So that's the reason I've used slick stick on that one also. But apart from that, if I have a normal piece or some wood which doesn't bleed, I don't prime. So. Why well, this is this is always personal preference, you know. I like sometimes to use boss anyway because boss gives like a, a nice smooth base for um careful I'm not dropping that a nice base for for your paints anyway so I can paint messy I've taped the inside off Great coverage, great coverage with those paints. So my mini brushes are very much used. If you look after your brushes, they last a very long time. Just turn it to the side. They last a very long time, but um, <laughs> mine are very much used, so. I like that color. 
blue is always a nice color anyway to go into the bathroom. You can see, especially you've seen that um, that branch where the branch was on, which was like a very dark, um, a very dark spot. And this is if you if you use a light color and you don't have um, a blocking primer on there, this will definitely show through. So it does say that one coat of the silk is um, about like one coat of the the boss when you use that. Sometimes when you have, you know, also with the silks, when you have some wood, which is a heavy bleeder, you may need not only two, you may need three or even more coats. Also, depending on the, the color you're using, when you use a dark color, like here, the, um, the uh, deep sea is, is a dark navy blue, so you don't need that. A certain brand of paint that you that I use all the time. Um, actually, yes, I do. I do most my projects with Dixie Bell paints because you basically you have everything. You get everything you need from them. You know they have base coats, they have bonding primers, they have um, stain blockers, they have cleaning products, they have different paints whatever you would like to do if you like to go more into the artistic range you can use the terra clay paints um, if you want to have outdoor paints um, or an all-in-one paint you use the silk paints if you want to have a very smooth finish and blending colors you can use the chalk mineral paints the chalk mineral paints come in 69 colors the silk paints come in 30 colors the terra clay paints come in 18 colors they come in different sizes, so if you only need like an excellent paint, you have like small jars with only four ounces of paint. Um, they have top coats in all different um, sorts of um, finishes. If you want to have a satiny finish, you can use the satin top coat. You have a gloss finish, you have a flat finish if you want to keep the, the flat, um, the flat uh, look of the classic chalk paints. The products are all water-based, they are VOC free or have very low VOC depending on the paint um, and on the product. They have, they have texture additives, they have special paints if you want to create patina. They have um, wood stains, oil-based, water-based, depending what you want to do. They have an artistic line, which is bells and whistles, which carry stencils. Um, decoupage papers, transfers. So you can just get everything from them and the quality is just outstanding. So I love the products. They have, you know, they have brushes and all sorts in natural bristle brushes in um, synthetic bristle brushes. Very difficult word for a German person. Very difficult word for a German person. So um, you just get everything you need. So just want to make sure I have all areas covered, do a little bit of touch up here on this side. So that's the first coat. This is gonna dry. This is gonna dry. So before you apply the second coat, let the paint dry for about two hours, depending on the room temperature and humidity where you're at. It's gonna be under here also. I missed some bits. So, but obviously, you know, there's like other paint lines which are great also, you know, if you have other paints, that's, um, that's fine. But for me, this is my paint line to go for. I have everything, I get everything I need of furniture. So it's only half an hour. Let's see, I'm gonna grab my heat gun. The mud, uh, it shrinks a little. So I may have to add a second coat of 
the mat on there just to make sure it's um, Let's see if we can send it, if that's already dry enough. We just grab some sandpaper. Just grab some sandpaper. If I have, if I have a, a straight or a flat surface, I use um, a sand block and put my sandpaper on there. And just get mine. Yeah. Everything's okay, nothing happened. <laughs> I'll bring you, I shall bring you a little further down again. So, let's see. Send that. Can you see that? Too generous on there on the outside. I have to get that down a little. Um. You can send that very, very easy. It is not dry, completely dry yet. Spot there. I'm just seeing now. I'm gonna go over it again, just to make sure I have everything covered. So and then what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use some buff over it because. I don't want any of it to show through the the boss basically or whenever you know not only the boss also when you use some um, another type of um, for repairs or something like that uh, a filler no, I've got it a filler um, it may have a, a different grip to the paint um, so you may end up seeing those areas and therefore boss is great. To give it a base for that and as i want to do some decoupage and i prefer a light i prefer a light sorry for the noise that's annoying for you i like to have a, um, a light base when I use decoupage because the decoupage papers are opaque and depending on the, the color underneath, um, the color of the paper will appear at the end. So, that's nicely. Loss to clean it a little off. I just had it with me. Where did I put it? Ah, there it is. This. Is. 
So when you use the mud for rose stenciling, and obviously when you do rose stenciling, you can, you know, if you have whatever you want to do, black and white, um, and use white on black, or you use uh, black on white, and you want to keep it that way, you don't want to do anything, you know, don't want to paint over it or something like that. You have to seal the mud anyway, because the mud is, you can reactivate that with water. So therefore, you should, this is a microfiber cloth, lint-free microfiber cloth. Since I'm not having my cats with me anymore for painting, since I have my shop, <laughs> this is uh, a lot easier not getting cat hairs on there. So as I said, I've missed a piece here and a piece on the other T. I don't know if you can see that. So I will fill that in with the mud. Just grab a little more. over it again. So, and also with the mud, you should let that dry on its own because you may otherwise end up with taking too much off than you want to because when it is not dried yet, um, it, you know, can clog up your sanding paper and this will not get like a smooth finish. I'm going to go over the whole thing just to make sure. Everything is on. It comes up. This is where the areas I missed before. There you go. So I'm going to let that dry now on its own. This is going to be sanded again. And then, as, as I said, I'm going to use my um, blocking primer, my boss on there. Boss comes in three colors, in white, in clear, and in gray, depending also, uh, Michelle. I do also, they have the moment in Marburg still with Manfred, by the way, <laughs> not with me. Um, so depending on, on the project you're doing, uh, you can use um, the blocking primer boss. And I'm going to use the white one because I'm going to put the decoupage on there. I'm just going to show you quickly what I meant with being translucent. You can see they're pretty nicely. They come, there's three sheets. So you can see, can you see my hand under there? You can see they're pretty good here. You can see the white, well, careful, it's still, still bad. But you can see the white comes through different than the, the wood itself. And also when it's a white background, it'll get clear basically when you, when you place it on your project. So we're going to do that next week. I'm going to let you go for now. This was a bit talking about preparation and stuff like that. Also, when you add the, the boss, uh, you may wipe that down, um, the dust with a, with a damp cloth. you got to let that wood dry because otherwise you will seal in with the blocking primer also the, the moisture which the wood has just soaked up. That's just the last tip for tonight, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. It's not that exciting at the moment. It'll get much prettier next week when we carry on with that piece. 
I'm thanking you so much for being with me tonight. My name is Anton. I'm the owner and creator of Energy from Elton on Helden. And if you haven't done it yet, guys, please leave me a follow on my page for, you know, more Master of Disaster tips and tricks and whatever. Have a lovely day, evening, afternoon, wherever you're watching from. It is uh, 20 um, to 7 p.m. over here at the moment. And I'm um, wishing you a lovely, a lovely evening from here. Good night, Michelle. Thank you, Kristen, for checking in on me. And um, I'll see you next week. Ta-da, bye-bye. De rien, Michelle. Merci à toi. Or tu, à toi, à tu. Je ne sais pas. <laughs> My French is not that good. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye for now.